Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Jennifer and today I have a fun technique for you where I take some basic solid stamping and add some depth to it using colored pencils. This is very easy to do and you don't need a whole lot of colored pencils and I'll talk more about that in a moment. I did this technique on the flowers that you see here and I'm also going to show you how to create that kind of ombre uh, background that I have going on there with all the sentiments. These are new stamps from Altenew, one of my favorite stamp companies. I think they're absolutely beautiful and this video will show you ways that you can kind of stretch your stamps and get more from them. Okay, so here are the two new stamp sets from Altenew that I'm using. I think they're just beautiful. I'm going to take that stamp set on the left and all of those are solid images. I'm going to show you how to add some depth to them. And with the stamp set on the right, we're going to create a background. I love sentiment stamps for backgrounds. Let's get started with the flowers. This is the W plus nine Miami Spice ink. This is a beautiful ink that stamps kind of splotchy at first, but it dries nice and solid. It's very similar to the Hero Arts and Simon Says Stamp inks. You could really use any ink that you want for this technique. I just love these colors. This is the Sweet Gelato color, which happens to be one of my favorites. Now I've stamped two of each so that you can compare the final results that we get from the colored pencil highlighting to what it looked like when we originally stamped it. I'm also stamping some green leaves. This is the green leaf ink from Simon Says Stamp. Again, you can use any ink you want. Decided I wanted to stamp a bunch of leaves because I wasn't really sure how many I was going to use, so I grabbed another piece of paper and added some more there. And by the way, you can use any white cardstock for this. I'm using Nina White. That happens to be my favorite. Okay, so let's go ahead and start adding the highlights. I'm using a Prismacolor white colored pencil for this. I will put a link where you can buy the white pencil by itself. So if you don't want to buy the whole set, you can get one, which is very inexpensive. And you can do so much with just the one white pencil. And this is a great quality white pencil. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it in the areas where there might be highlight, like where the light might be hitting the flower, so kind of towards the top of the petals. And I'm just kind of scribbling it on. You can see I'm not taking much time to blend. I'm just putting the white down. Now here is the ticket. This is the trick to making this look nice. You take a good eraser and kind of gently erase where the white pencil you want to kind of blend into the original ink. So I'm just scribbling on. Look how much I'm just scribbling that white pencil on. Then I come in with the eraser and soften it and make it blend. You want to use a pretty good eraser for this. You could probably use any eraser. I really like the eraser that comes on this pencil. Uh, this is a mechanical pencil that's awesome and it's got a huge eraser in it and comes with a replacement. And I'll link to that pencil in my YouTube description below and on my blog. But any good eraser would work for this. One of the fun things about this technique is you don't have to worry about staying inside of the lines because you're using a white pencil. So if you go outside of the lines onto white paper, you'll never notice it. You can also put the pencil on pretty heavily, put down a really heavy coat of it, and you can then erase it so it kind of softens it. So it's nice because you can kind of fix it if you've put too much down. So here you can see I am not taking any effort to blend because the eraser will do that for me. I really like the results of this because it almost looks velvety anywhere you put that white pencil. So it's a great way to give the look of dimension and also the look of texture. Once I got started, I decided just to do a lot of the white scribbling at once and then go in with the eraser all at once. And it takes a lot less time that way. This is a pretty complicated image, so you can imagine it'd be a lot simpler with a simpler image too. Okay, so now that I've gone ahead and finished this, I did want to take this one step further. You can see the difference between the solid image on the top and where we added the white highlights on the bottom. But I wanted to show you another way to do this. You could stop here if you wanted to. But another way that you can add even more dimension to this image is to go in with a darker color. So if you have a set of colored pencils, you could use that here. I just took a darker kind of red color, a burgundy color, and I'm just adding a little bit of this dark color right in the deepest parts of of the flower so kind of um, in the areas where the petals go back into the flower and you'll notice I'm not putting much down I don't think you really need a whole lot since we have those white highlights there too so this doesn't take a whole lot of time so if you have a set of colored pencils you could definitely do that and again you can blend it out with the eraser but I put so little on that I don't feel a need to do that I also added some kind of um, yellow uh, colored pencil highlight to the center of the flower there now you can see how that really added even more to the flower, but you could have skipped that part if you wanted to and just gone with the white colored pencil highlights. Now another thing you can do with your colored pencil is come in and kind of reinforce some of the thin white lines. 
just to kind of make them highlight a little bit. If you um, say this was a solid image with like a black outline, you could do this right up against the black outline and it really just makes it pop. So you can see I'm going in kind of with the sharper edge of my pencil to do this. In a moment, I'm going to show you another way to do this with a different tool. But I really think adding these little white highlights makes the image pop. And check out the difference between the original stamped flower and what we've done with the colored pencils. It really makes a big difference. Now, I am a big fan of making more than one card at once. You've got the stuff out, you might as well. So I decided I wanted to make a peach colored flower also. I followed the exact same technique. This time I did all of the white colored pencil and then I did all of the racing to blend all at once. And this really saved a lot of time. But I was kind of getting the hang of the technique with that burgundy colored flower. And you can see how easily it blends with the eraser. Now on this one, again, I'm adding some dark yellow highlights to the inside of the flower. And then I came in with like a soft red colored pencil just to add a little bit of dark color to the depth of the flower, to the darkest parts of the flower. Again, I'm not spending much time or putting much down, just a little bit right along those inside edges. I wanted to mention again, you could do this part with any kind of colored pencils you may have, even your kids' Crayola colored pencils. Uh, but for the white, I recommend getting a good white colored pencil. You can buy it individually, which is nice. And I really think the Prismac colored are really nice because they're soft and go on very easily. Now with the burgundy flower, I use the white pencil to add kind of outline highlights. This time I'm using my white jelly roll pen. I usually use the white Signo Broad pen because it goes on nice and smooth, but I also like to use this white jelly roll pen for a couple reasons. One is it's inexpensive and the other is it goes down very thin, very fine. So you can see that it really goes tiny, tiny lined here. Whereas my Uniball doesn't go this thin. So this is great for adding just simple little outlines lines and it's really the only time I use the jelly roll pen but check out those great white highlights those really nice and vibrant white highlights that I get with the jelly roll pen it's nice and fine and great for adding finishing touches onto stamped images like this one so now it's time to do the leaves I'm not going to show all of this because it's the exact same thing as the flowers I just did some white scribbles around the outside edge you can see I'm not taking any time to make it look good but then I go in with my eraser and blend it out then I went in with a darker green pencil and just added some depth to the center of the leaves. And then I came in with that white jelly roll pen to kind of add some fine lines to the leaves so they match the flowers that we've already created. And if you don't have the white jelly roll pen, you could definitely use the white pencil. Um, just kind of sharpen and get a nice sharp edge to be able to do these little highlighted lines like this. So now that we've finished our coloring, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these images out. I'm going to cut right up against the edge, just leaving a fine white trim around the edges so it matches the fine white lines inside the stamped image. So now it is time, after cutting these out, to create our background. So I've kind of got this ombre look from the dark gray to the light gray with all the sentiment images. This is a great way to get more out of your sentiment stamp sets. So I have a Hero Arts white note card. It's my favorite white note card to use. And I have my T-ruler. I'm just using a straight line to draw, as a straight edge to draw a line diagonally across the card. Now I'm actually gonna just randomly draw a bunch of diagonal lines along the bottom so that I kind of have some guides as I do my stamping. You can see they aren't perfectly spaced. It doesn't matter. It's just nice to have a bunch of lines down there so that we can make sure that we keep our sentiment stamping straight as we go. And by the way, while I have this all out, I'm going to make several cards at once. So now what I'm going to do is mount two images together onto an acrylic block and use the lines on the block as a guide. So you can see I have two mounted together here, and I'm going to stamp them with my darkest gray ink, which is Hero Arts Charcoal. Now there is a line on my acrylic block, I love lines on acrylic blocks, that I'm going to use as a guide to line up with the lines I've drawn on my card. And this really helps in keeping my stamping straight. So I just kind of start in the middle and then I stamp on the two sides of it. And there, look at, I've already gotten uh, two lines of sentiment stamp since I mounted them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this with the other note cards that I have. You'll notice I'm just showing clips because my big head gets in the way of the camera as I look above to line up my stamping. So after I've done two lines with some different sentiments, I always mount two sentiments together with the dark ch uh, charcoal ink. I'm switching to a medium shade of gray. This is Silver Lining from W Plus 9, and I'm going to stamp the two sentiments right under that. So I started with the dark ink, and then I did several rows of sentiments with the medium color gray ink. 
And then I will switch to my lightest gray ink, which is the Simon Says Stamp Fog ink. Now I'm using those pencil lines that I drew as kind of a guide to keep going straight. Usually I put two sentiments together on a block to stamp at, a, at one time. Sometimes I switch to one. You could by all means do more if you wanted to, but I wanted to make sure I kept everything nice and lined up and switch the sentiments as I went. I love using this technique to create my own kind of pattern paper background using my sentiment stamps. It's a great way to stretch any sentiments you have and you could use a variety of sentiments from different stamp sets together. Okay, so now it's time to add our floral embellishment. I've kind of arranged it so some of the leaves stick out from our image. I'm gonna place it on my card as kind of a space holder and then I'm using some black uh, VersaFine pigment ink to stamp our sentiment on here. The reason I'm using the VersaFine is I want to heat emboss this so it has a little bit of shine to it. So I'm adding my Hero Arts Clear Embossing Powder and I'll heat set that. I really wanted to make sure that that sentiment stood out um, from all the sentiments that we had in the background. And this sentiment, by the way, is actually from the same Alta New stamp set. So now that we have that, it's time to add our little flower to this. Now I normally use that big honk and roll of foam tape for my dimension, but I thought with this guy it was easier to use small little foam squares. So I've put lots of these on the back here and now I'll stick it onto my card. Now another reason I use those small little foam squares is I want to tuck some thread behind this in a moment and you'll see it makes it um, easier for me to do that. I really like having the dimension by the behind the flower, but I also think it would have been fun to stamp this directly on the card and mask over it before we did our sentiment background. That's just another variation. Okay, so now I want to add some silver thread kind of peeking out from behind our flower. I love this silver thread. Uh, it's DMC silver thread, and I'll link to it below and on my blog. Now what I like to do is double it over, so I have two thicknesses, and then I just tie it into a freestanding bow. So I make a loop, and then I put a knot around it, so I have another little loop. And now I just have kind of a bunch of loops and a bunch of uh, ends sticking out here. Just look, make it kind of look random, I kind of pull it uneven. So now I just have a bow with two strands. Now I'm going to take this with my tweezers and I'm going to pinch it and I'm going to push it in behind my flower. So I'm kind of tucking it in there so that it kind of peeks out a little bit. Then I'm going to squeeze a little bit of multi-medium. It's a great, strong, matte adhesive from Ranger. Squeeze that in there so that when it dries, the thread stays in there. So by using those small little foam squares, I have room to kind of tuck this back there. So I'm going to kind of pull some of the ends so I make my loops a little bit smaller, kind of position how, them how I want them, cut the ends, and then I just let that adhesive dry and those um, that little thread will stay put there. And it'll look, look, it kind of stay how you tuck it in there. That's one of the great things about that adhesive is it's super strong. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the burgundy flower. I have doubled over my thread, just making a freestanding bow. Now you can see I'm kind of pulling one of the loops smaller than the other, just so I have a little variation. I'll cut my ends. Again, I'll take my tweezers to kind of pinch the center of my bow here, and then just stuff it in there, kind of tuck it back in there. It popped out there, tuck it back in there again. Then I'll go in and squeeze my multi-medium in there so that it dries staying put there. You could also just kind of do a bunch of loops of the thread and just have part of it sticking out or stick your flower on top of it. And that is what holds your um, loops of thread there. But I think this is a fun trick to kind of make um, loops and little um, ends sticking out too. So many ways you can use this thread. It's super inexpensive and it also comes in a bright gold and a kind of dull gold too. So there we have two cards that show adding highlighting to stamped images with colored pencils and also how to use sentiments to create a fun background. If you are interested in the products I use, they're linked below in my YouTube description to multiple sources, or you can head over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com where I'll have much more information and a giveaway of some of these stamps. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows that you want to see more from me, and I hope to see you again soon.